For the past three months and across 14 videos, I have been developing an immersive first-person controller inspired by the likes of games like Amnesia, System Shock, and FNAF. When I say immersive, I mean the player can interact with just about anything. We can pick up boxes, carry them around, and chuck them into the void never to be seen again. We can turn wheels, pull switches, and open doors all by moving our mouse. We can grab notes from the walls that appear in our hand and tilt and sway with the player as we move. This system is super flexible and all it requires us to do is drag and drop our interaction component onto any object we want. Of course, all we need to do is set up the necessary variables in the inspector. Bruh. Okay, so that's a lot of export variables. Uh, well, maybe we can change a few things in the code. And oh my goodness! Squidward! <sighs> all right, so our code needs to be refactored. Let's talk about why. So in programming, there is a concept known as technical debt. Now, technical debt is when developers take a shortcut to get something working quickly, even though it's not the cleanest or even efficient way to do it. And just like real debt, you end up paying for it at some point. For example, let's say you're running late for school or work, so you simply throw all your clothes into a big old pile instead of folding them. Sure, it saves time right now, but next morning, it's just gonna take longer to find a clean shirt. If you keep doing this over and over, eventually you're going to spend more time digging through the pile to find a single piece of clothing than if you just folded your laundry in the first place. Our interaction component script is a prime example of technical debt. It's too big, it's poorly organized, and every interaction is just jammed into it. Sure, on the outside, all of our interactions look and work great, but peek behind the curtain too long and you're probably going to get pink eye. A clear example of this is in our dead properties. This is our default cube. This is the box that I have been mercilessly chucking against the wall for the past three months. To get this working is easy. Simply drag and drop our interaction component on it. But what's all this garbage on the inspector? The box doesn't have a pivot point. Max rotation, the box doesn't even rotate. Why does it need three different sound effects? And what do you mean I can lock it? Every time we make a new object interactable, we tack on a whole bunch of unnecessary additional data that just gets wasted. And every time we have to sort through what is necessary to assign and what isn't. Technical debt. So how do we fix this? Your first thought might be to completely separate all logic into their own scripts. Doors have their own script, boxes have their own script, etc. But this completely defeats one of the main purposes of our original interaction component design, which is code reusability. Simply put, if two pieces of code are identical or are almost identical, we should not be copying and pasting them into different scripts. If in the future we have to change this logic, you have to change it in every single script that we copied and pasted, and there's simply no guarantee that we remember everywhere we copy and pasted it. Technical debt would strike again. So what's our solution? Well, it's a design philosophy that's almost considered heresy in the Godot community. Inheritance. You see, Godot is based on this design principle of composition. Composition is when you build one big thing out of smaller things called components. So for instance, if you want to build a car, you could build an engine, build four different wheels, build a few different other parts, you slap them together, bam, now you have a car. And this is essentially how we set up our player. Instead of hard coding our interaction controller and sanity logic into the player script itself, we abstracted them out into their own nodes. So don't get me wrong, composition is wonderful and you should absolutely be using it in your project. But for our use case, inheritance is simply the better solution. You see, inheritance is where you pull out as much logic as possible into a parent class, and then the children of this class only have to add logic that makes them unique, and they just simply reuse the existing parent logic whenever they need. So to go back to our car example, a car and a motorcycle are both vehicles. They both drive forward, they both go in reverse, they both brake. They both have wheels, but they have a different number of wheels. This means that all the movement logic can be handled in the parent class. We can also define that they both have wheels, but establish how many wheels that they have in their children class. And then we can simply write any additional logic in the child class. So we can have our motorcycle do a wheelie. Most docs and tutorials establish this dichotomy as an either or situation, but it's really not. The best practice is to use both throughout your project. So we're about five minutes in and I still haven't mentioned how I refactored my code. So let's go ahead and discuss that. All of our interactables are following a three-step interaction format. A pre-interact that runs on the first frame that the player begins interacting with an object, an interact that runs every frame the player is still interacting with an object, and finally a post-interact that runs one frame after the player stops interacting. Because this design principle is expected on every single one of the objects we want to interact with, 
We simply pull out that behavior and put it into our new abstract interaction class. This is our top level class, meaning all of our interactions are expected to use the behavior that we define here. And from there, most of the interactions just expand the base logic with their own. Items can be picked up, keypads get typed on, etc. All of the logic in these classes is virtually identical to what we created in the tutorials, but now we can easily expand on them in the future without affecting the other interaction types, or even spending an hour scrolling through the interaction component script. The biggest thing you'll notice is how much cleaner our inspector looks. No more dead properties that don't affect anything. Now only the necessary export variables are displayed to the developer. This is most clearly seen with our new rotatable object class. For our doors, switches, and wheels that all rotate, we added a middleman class to share that behavior. So let me introduce you to the rotatable interaction. This class inherits the design principle of the abstract just like everything else, but it holds all the logic that was identical between the doors, switches, and wheels. For instance, they all define a maximum rotation allowed, and they all make a sound effect when they're being moved. The sound effects themselves are obviously different, but they all play the same, so we can define how the movement sound effects play in a single common class for all three objects. As you can see, code reusability has been achieved. Then they have their own variables that are all exclusive to their own object type. Wheels have a kickback, doors can be locked, and they all have their own defined sound effects to play at a given time. This means if I decide to implement a new rotatable object in the future, half the work is already done for me. So for example, if I wanted to add the security cameras from a game like Bioshock, I would simply create a security camera interaction class that inherits from the rotatable interaction class. I would set what the movement sound effect is, and I would define its max rotation, which is something like 90 degrees, in the rotatable interaction portion of the inspector. And then any logic for detecting the player or sounding the alarm simply gets written in the child security camera interaction class. And because this class still uses our three-step interaction design, this could even be expanded on to allow the player to hack just like in the original game. So as I begin to add more puzzle mechanics into the controller, we can easily reuse code between any new and existing interactions. If you're interested in the code changes that I did for this refactor, I will be making a more in-depth step-by-step guide in the near future. But the new system is available to view and download from my GitHub page. And don't forget to join my Discord by using the link in the description if you need any help with the project.